What's up, everybody? It's your boy, your pastor, your rapper, Kingdom Child. Welcome to Mavuno Young and Fearless. In case you're watching this for the first time and you would like to see more of our videos, make sure you check out our YouTube channel at Mavuno Young and Fearless. Enjoy the service and stay blessed. Hi guys, welcome to the last week of January. The month has ended, imagine. The January is supposed to have 55 weeks. It actually has come to an end. And I'm just so excited about uh, the things that we've been going through this month. We've been talking about winning and not just being a Christian. I think many people have just, you know, we got saved, you're okay with life, you're just there. But we're talking about being a winning Christian. And we started off by um, the first week inviting you to a time of prayer and fasting because we were saying, Nobody knows what tomorrow holds, you know? So we need to be able to seek God. Last year was crazy for a lot of people. And for this year, we didn't want to enter the year hopeless. We actually wanted to ask, what is it that God is doing? What direction should we be moving in? So we invited you guys into a time of prayer and fasting just to seek God on how to align ourselves in this year. And then the next uh, week, we're talking about dysfunctions and how People have been stuck in the same positions for so long, it's become normal. Yet, that's not the kind of life that God calls us to. We are called to more, we are called to greater. There's so much that God has put in store for you. But you've been in the same situation for so long, you tend to think that it's normal, yet it's not. And then last week, um, we had Pastor Lynn taking us through um, how your faith can actually impact somebody else. This faith is not supposed to be about one person. It's not just for you. The people around you can benefit from your faith. So today I want to just bring all this to a close and I just want to give us a few steps um, as we continue the year just to be able to be winning Christians. And I want us to read a scripture before we get into the conversation for the day. And this is Mark chapter 10. So I'm reading from Mark chapter 10 verse 46 to 52. And it's a story about a blind man. And so as we know if you've read through the Gospels, you know that Jesus always had a crowd of people around him, people always following him. And of course, it's because he could heal, he could multiply food, he could calm the storm, walk on water. Like there's a lot of amazing things that he did. And of course, that attracts a crowd. So there's always people around him. Very rarely would you find Jesus by himself. Sometimes he actually had to hide just to be able to go and pray or to be able to teach his disciples alone. So this story, um, we... We're reading is from Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. And this is what it says. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, get on your feet, he is calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to where Jesus was. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind, blind man replied, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Now, something interesting about this guy, he was not part of the crowd that was following Jesus. For one reason is he was blind. So he was seated, minding his own business, he used to be brought to this corner to beg just because he was not able to work because he was blind. So it's an everyday thing, he's doing, he's minding his business and then Jesus happens to pass by. And he's just like, you know what, I've heard about this guy. There's no way that he's going to pass me by. I want to see. I need to see. 
And so he begins to shout. But of course, the crowds are too busy trying to listen to what Jesus has to say. They're too busy trying to get what they need from him that they keep silencing him. They tell him to shut up. But this guy is so focused on what he needs from, from Jesus that he doesn't keep quiet. He keeps shouting even more. So that the, the, all these people around him rebuking him, asking him to remain silent, but he doesn't. He keeps raising his voice. And eventually Jesus hears him from amongst the crowd and he says, call him. Something interesting to note, when we're talking about being winning Christians, you need to recognize that not everybody in this life wants you to succeed. Situations themselves don't want you to succeed. The way life is created, it's, it's created to be a challenge. But there's one thing that we can be sure of, that if we are working with Christ, then he created us to win. When you look at the Bible, when you look at the things that uh, the Bible talks about, things like John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you may have life and have it in abundance. It doesn't sound like we're just supposed to be churchgoers. It doesn't sound like we're just supposed to be showing up on Sunday, you know, sing a few cute songs, uh, listen to a sermon, and then go home. It sounds like we're supposed to be winning at this life. But how do you do that? So I want to share a few things. This, is, this sermon series has been called Winning because you're talking about how to get to the finish line. So let me share a few points. The first thing I want us to note is that whenever it is that you're pursuing something, it's not going to be easy. So first of all, you need to set your mindset to know that opposition is going to come your way. Let me give you an example of an athlete. So we're Kenyans and okay, I'm Kenyan. I don't know whether you're Kenyan if you're watching me. <laughs> but for Kenyans, one thing that we're known for is athletics. Like we're those people who go to the Olympics and dominate. We go to marathons and we kill it. We're just those people. Okay, personally, I cannot run to save my life, but I appreciate the people who do. Now, if, if you look at an athlete, people like David Rudisha, people like Kipchoge, who we've been talking about forever, I think nobody in this world doesn't know who Kipchoge is. He set the record of being limitless as a human being. And so one thing that athletes do when it's in the morning, 5 a.m. while you're still on your second or your third gym, these guys are outside in the cold training. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but for me, I'm, I'm not a morning person. So I don't, waking up early is not something that I enjoy doing. But if I was in a marathon, I'd know that this is the best time to train. When there's the least number of people outside, when there's no resistance in terms of weather and everything, that would be the best time to train. And so when I'm still asleep, I am probably covering my head to go to my dream number two. These guys are outside running. And the first thing that you need to note is that if you're going to, to be persistent in your faith, if you're gonna have winning faith, you have to go beyond your feelings. That's the first thing that you need to note. So just like an athlete, goes against the things that their body is telling them. They said prefer to sleep, but because they know they're training to win, then they wake up early and they go out. The second thing I want to share is that you need to ignore outside forces. So be it rain, be it sunshine, you'll find that these guys are waking up still to go and train because what do they need to do? They need to build resistance. Same thing applies to our, to our faith. When you look at this uh, blind man, Bartimaeus, Guys told him to shut up. He's making noise. He's being a nuisance. But he had to go above the external forces and keep pushing forward. That's the same thing that we need to do. There are many times that the people around you, and this, this usually is people closest to you, will discourage you from the things that God is calling you to. But if you're going to win at this, if you're going to accomplish the things that God has called you to, then you need to be able to ignore the voices around you. I'm not saying you ignore the wisdom. Sometimes people around us have wisdom that will help us. But I'm saying that anybody who's trying to put you down or anybody who's trying to stop you from achieving the things that God is calling you to, you need to ignore the voices around you. The third thing that I want us to notice is cut out distractions. If you're training, again, I, I like this, this um, analogy of an athlete because it has everything from 
training to running to getting to the finish line. We always see them on the podium when the national anthem is being played and they're being given the medals and all of us are cheering and admiring. But we don't realize the work that goes into that. And it's the same thing with a winning Christian. You look at their lives and you're just like, oh my God, their relationships are working. Their careers are going well. All these things around them are working. But you don't know the time they've spent in prayer, the time that they've spent um, reading the word, the time that they've spent seeking God for these things that we see from the outside. So the third thing I want to share is cut out distractions. So let's go back to this athlete again. If I'm training for a marathon, yo, it doesn't matter what everybody else around me is doing, I'm training for a marathon. You could be, let's give an example of, of um, Kipchoge. Kipchoge is married and he has kids, but I'm pretty sure that when he's waking up to go train, he's not asking his wife to wake up as well. I'm pretty sure that when he's eating the right diet just to be able to build resistance and immunity in his body, he's not requesting his kids to do the same thing. And so it shouldn't matter what the people around you are doing. For us, we know where it is that we're heading. So even if you're alone, you're reading the Bible by yourself. The people around you don't see it the same way. You're struggling to pray by yourself. The people around you don't have the same convictions. Keep going. Do not allow yourself to be distracted. Because if you're going to get to that finish line, you won't do it with a crowd. It will be you. So the, the fourth thing that I want us to read, and it's the last one, you need to remain focused on the goal. What is it that you're working towards? I know in January, all of us get saved. <laughs> And it's pretty much because guys are broke or you have no clue what the year holds or you just, you know, most times in January you find all churches are full. Guys are seeking God. And then somewhere along the line, guys drop off. You know, life happens, challenges come, school, you're distracted, all these things. But if you're going to be a winning Christian, guys, you need to remain focused on what the goal is. You need to be able to look beyond the things around you and focus on what it is that you're going towards. I don't think any athlete starts running without seeing the finish line in their mind. I don't think there's any athlete who just, you know, today I'll train, tomorrow not so much. They're so focused on the goal, they've visualized it, they're seeing that podium with them standing there with their national anthem being played in the back. And that is what wakes them up in the morning. That's what helps them ignore the voices around them. That's what helps them um, not worry about the distractions and just keep going. So we need to know what is it that we're working towards. This winning faith, if it's family, for us to have functional families, we need to see that and focus on that goal. If it's being in sane relationships, we need to see that and focus on that goal. If it's, you know, passing in school or just stopping a habit that has been part of your life for so long, you need to see that goal and focus on it. Let me share one verse that I really love. And this is actually our verse for the year this year at uh, MYF. And it's Romans 12 too. It says, don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve of God's will, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Now, this verse tells us a couple of things. The first thing is that don't do what everybody else is doing. That's the first thing. The second thing is that God transforms us the more we seek him. When you're reading that Bible, a lot of times when you're starting out, it does not make any sense. The same way, when you're starting out to train, there's no athlete who trains the first day and they're ready to run a marathon. No, it gets, it's hard. It's your body has to adjust, your muscles, your mindset, your endurance. So when you're starting out, it's not easy, but that's what transformation is about. It's about doing one thing at a time, doing the second thing, doing the third thing. And the more you continue to do these things, the more you grow, the more your endurance is built. And at some point you realize that you're not struggling to read that chapter a day. Before one verse, you would be feeling so accomplished because you've opened your Bible. But now the more you keep reading, you realize this is not a challenge anymore. And that's how you grow. That's how you're transformed. And that's how your life and the things around you begin to change. That's when you move from a dysfunctional relationship to a relationship leading to marriage, to marriage and, you know, all these things. That's how you move from struggling with school to you're a focused student and you know what, what it is that you're looking for. That's how you move from one side of, 
dysfunctionality to the other side. So I don't know what it is that you're hearing me say. But for me today, I just wanted to encourage you that don't give up on this. If you're ever going to be a winning Christian, there's work that comes into it. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy. And nobody said it would be. Jesus himself promised that this life is going to be hard, but you're not walking through it alone. So as we begin this year, as we've come to the end of this series, I just want to challenge us. Don't give up now. Keep pushing. Keep going. Don't settle for less than the things that God has given unto us. If it's joy that you need, if it's peace or whatever it is that you need in your life, don't settle for anything less. So as we get into this time of reflection, I just want you to think about the areas in your life that you need to be persistent in. The areas of your life that you need to be constant in. This is a struggle. All of us are struggling with this thing. But it's, it's for us to keep making decisions to be better, to do more, to go the mile. And God is always here working with us. We're not doing this by ourselves. The Holy Spirit is there to give us strength, to guide us, to walk with us through this. So as we get into this reflection time, I just ask that maybe take a pen and paper, maybe on your phone, write down what are these areas that you need to be persistent in? What are the areas that you need to be constant at? And reflect on that as we go through this reflection. How precious, how lovely your thoughts, O oh Lord, toward me. How truly amazing is the grace that you have shown. O oh majesty, I live to see your face. search for you and I will find you, I will find you with all my heart, I will leave my hands to you and worship, and I will worship with all my the Father's love towards us. How gravely amazing is the radiance of you. Oh, majesty, I live to see your face and be transformed. search for you and I will find you, I will find you with all my heart, I will leave my ears to you and worship, and I will worship with all my heart, I will search for you and I will find you. Find you with all my heart. I will lift my hands to you and worship, and I will worship with all my heart. Yeah. Oh.
find you with all my heart I will lift my hands to you and worship and I will worship with all my heart I give you my heart, give you my soul. But I give you my heart, give you my soul. Give you my I don't know what's areas of your life you've written down or things that you feel that you need to do better at but I just want to pray for you because <laughs> change is not easy I think uh, in the third someone he talked about how it's easier to remain in your dysfunction because it's comfortable because it's normal anytime you need to make a change it's scary because you don't know what comes next but I just want to pray for you that Lord would, that God would help us to be consistent in searching for him we can talk about being Christians and being Christians all our lives, but we are mediocre Christians. Nothing has changed. Things have remained the same. So, but if we're going to be the kind of Christians that have been called out to, if we're going to be winning Christians, then we need to be constant. We need to be persistent. We need to keep searching for this God and growing in Him. So allow me to pray for you. Lord, I thank you for everybody who's watching us today. I don't know at what point of their lives they're in at this, at this, in this moment. I don't know what season they find themselves in. But I know that persistence is important. I know that consistency in your word, in prayer, is what helps us to become winning Christians. And so I just ask that, Lord, you would jumpstart them. Sometimes we've been in the same position for so long, we don't even know what it takes to start. We don't even know how to begin this journey. But I ask that, Lord, you would, you would speak to their hearts, that you would move them, that you'd give them the courage to step out of those spaces that they have been stuck in and move forward, that they'd be so focused on the goal, they'd not be distracted by the things around them, that whether their friends or their family members are going with them, that they will choose to go anyway. And Lord, I pray that they would make it to the finish line. Thank you, because it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your Holy Spirit. So would you strengthen us, Lord, even as we continue to submit to you, even as we continue to seek you, would you strengthen us and guide us? So we bless you and we give you glory. We pray all this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us. I, have, I pray that you have a blessed week. And let's keep moving forward in this year. Keep winning. Yes, I'm all yours. Yeah, I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. I will lift my hands to you and worship. And I will worship. With all my heart, Thank you so much for watching the service. We hope you have been blessed and learned something important. If you want to connect with us more or check us out, we have other interesting videos and someone's on our YouTube channel, Mavuno Young and Fearless. We'd love to see you subscribe, like, share, and comment. Kindly enjoy your week.